Who has the first question? Were, were you were you uh, were you satisfied with um, Mr. Griffin's answer on the question about uh, his role in the, in the uh, in the firing of Bud Cummings? No, because I don't really think we had an answer. But I think the most disappointing part of and the responses that he gave was that uh, he did not stand for a public hearing, for a confirmation hearing the way anybody else had to, because he knew he would not get a fair hearing. Now, we're going to have to believe that everybody who goes before a confirmation hearing gets a fair trial but Mr. Griffin, or that nobody ever gets a fair hearing. So I was quite disappointed with that, especially from a man who worked for the Justice Department that is supposed to be helping us believe in our system. You, you had said after that U.S. Attorney's Forum, though, your, your campaign put out a statement saying that you weren't going to make a political issue out of this, and now, now you are. You know, are, you know, are, are, you, are you backtracking? I also said that I went to, when I went to the um, hearing, uh, when those, those uh, attorneys were there, I mean, that had a profound effect on me that was something more so than just talking about this in the abstract. When I heard those folks sit there and talk about what this did to their personal lives, yeah, that made me think about things differently. And it also made me think about things differently as well to hear these folks who are Republicans. These are not Democrats who are hacking at Mr. Griffin. And it absolutely uh, changed my way of thinking about this. To hear Paul Charlton remind us how much character counts and that when character was not the issue foremost and someone used his position to subvert the Justice Department. I, I think that's something that is a campaign issue, that I don't have the convenience of just saying it doesn't matter, because it, it does matter. And these are not just my words. I'm talking about people who are in the position, uh, folks who are not Republic, not, Democrat, not Democrats, but Republicans. And so I, I think these are issues that people ought to be concerned about. Yes? Ms. Elliott, can you tell us a little bit about how you felt about the debate and how did it go? Well, I, I actually felt privileged to be a part of it, as you, as you know. This was the first time I've ever been a part of a debate of this order, and so it was a real privilege to have an opportunity to talk directly to uh, uh, citizens, to have uh, three esteemed journalists sit there and not know what, what question is going to come at you. Um, and it, get, it I think it gave me a chance to, to really show myself and show the people, you know, I, I, I have what it takes to stand up to the pressure and, and take the tough questions and not pretend as if I've got all the answers, but to do what I've done for all these years when uh, you're called on to serve, you don't know everything, you can't do everything, but, but you do the best you can, and I, and I think it went very well. I'm pleased with it. And one more question. Mm -hmm. um, towards the end, your opponent said that if people want things to stay the same under the Obama administration, they should vote for you yes. and not him. Um, how do you want to re review that? Well, obviously, if you've not been in the state for very long, you don't know that George Elliott is nobody's lackey. There's not anybody in the state who thinks that I just do what I'm told. You can ask many people about that. So for him to assume, once again, this is an assumption on Mr. Griffin's part, just as he assumed he was not going to get a fair hearing, he assumes because he hasn't been here and he doesn't know that I'm my own person. So whether or not we get much of the same is not going to be because anybody in Washington tells me what to do. And I think that's what he was implying. But the thing we know for sure we don't want is what Mr. Griffin has told us he will go to Washington and do, and that's pretty much be a part of this backward movement to the days of the Bush administration. And that is what got us into the situation we're in now. Progress means going forward, not putting the car in reverse and hitting the gas and going backward. And that's not what this country needs at this point. That's it. Thank you all. <laughs> I'm out of here. Thank you, Thank you all. Thanks very much.